Hey friends, Dennis Ernst here, your personal phlebotomy guru. I know you see this all the time. No sooner do you tighten up the tourniquet around your patient's arm when they start doing this. Pumping that old fist. Just going to town. Well, they're trying to help. We know that. We know that they think they're going to make their veins easier to find, and they just might. But what they don't realize is that they could be as much as doubling the concentration of potassium in the blood that you're about to draw. And when that happens, the physician gets these potassium results that no longer represent what's really going on with them. So for example, if your patient comes in with a normal potassium level in their bloodstream, but they're allowed to pump their fist, then the laboratory is going to report out this wildly elevated potassium level and the physician could be treating them according to something that doesn't exist, according to a, a condition they don't have. Or worse yet, maybe the patient comes in with a really critically low potassium level, but because they're allowed to pump their fist, the laboratory reports out a normal result and they don't get treated according to something that they should get treated for. So they get under-medicated, over-medicated, misdiagnosed, undiagnosed, mismanaged. See, that's why it's so important phlebotomists prevent patients from pumping their fists in the first place. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But first, let's make sure you get notified every time I launch a new video by clicking on the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner here and then clicking on the notification bell once you get to our YouTube homepage. You see this book? This is kind of like the Bible of pre-analytics. The Effects of Pre-Analytical Variables on Clinical Laboratory Tests. This is a massive book with, with very small print. It lists all of the pre-analytical variables that can alter a test result before it's even tested. Those patient conditions and those mistakes that phlebotomists and other healthcare professionals make while they're drawing the sample, handling it, processing it, centrifuging it, and so on. Did you know that the one laboratory test a physician can order that is most susceptible to pre-analytical errors potassium. There's over 80 pre-analytical variables that can cause a potassium level to be falsely elevated. And when you get to fist pumping, it's one of the biggest and the most common. So we're going to show you a little bit of a clip here from a video we produced called Potassium Results Your Physicians Can Trust. And then when it's through, we'll come back and talk about it. Hi, I'm Dennis Ernst. I'm the executive director of the center. Over the years, laboratories frequently ask us to help them troubleshoot problems with falsely elevated potassiums. It seems to be the one analyte that's more affected by pre-analytical variables than any other. And when your physicians don't trust your potassium results, it calls everything else into question, doesn't it? So it stands to reason that if you can keep physicians from questioning your potassiums, then your credibility should be easy to maintain on other analytes as well. How many times do patients immediately start pumping their fists the moment you apply the tourniquet? It happens a lot. Despite how widespread it has been reported that pumping the fist elevates the potassium level, many of those drawing blood still permit it, even request it. In fact, the effect of fist pumping on potassium levels was even reported in USA Today. How much does it raise a potassium level? One study showed it increases circulating potassium by up to 2.7 milliequivalents per liter. It has also been reported that patients pumping their fist prior to a blood draw causes one-third of all elevated potassium results and is responsible for half of all critical value potassium results. It's a good idea to train patients not to pump their fists and to tell them why pumping isn't a good idea. Should the next phlebotomist they encounter not be aware of the negative effects of pumping the fist, at least the patient will know to avoid the practice. Instruct your patients to clench and hold their fist, but only if necessary. Pumping should never be attempted no matter how difficult the vein is to locate. As an alternative, veins can be made more obvious by warming the site with a warm compress or by lowering the patient's arm. If pumping the fist is required as a last resort, release the tourniquet for two minutes to allow blood in the arm to return to its basal state. So there you have it. Don't allow patients to pump their fist. Hey, if you can eradicate this one most commonly committed pre-analytical error, make sure that none of your patients ever get their blood drawn after having pumped their fist 
your patients are going to be treated according to more accurate potassium results. Nobody's going to be under-medicated, over-medicated, misdiagnosed, mismanaged, undiagnosed, because you knew the effects of fist pumping on the test results. There's your phlebotomy tip of the day. I'm Dennis Ernst, your personal phlebotomy guru. Go out and stick to the standards.